Welcome to Fulham Fix, Thank episode you. four. I'm Ivan Berry. Uh, I'm Felix White. Are we dropping the... We had myself? to drop myself. Listening back now, I realise <laughs> we do say it too much. It made me paranoid. E- even in everyday, you know, situations now, I'm dropping the dropping myself. Okay, all right, let's get rid of it before it's we gone. go too far. Yeah, It's, it's done. So it's off. Yeah, really good, mate. How, how's good. the States? I know you've been out, you've been jet setting, you've been... Yeah, and it's spreading the word of Fulham around the world. It's funny you should say, yeah, spreading a good word of Fulham mm. because I wasn't intentionally going to America to do that. I was going there to learn about baseball. Okay, but I sat down and spoke to a very famous American commentator who go by, who goes by the name of Boog. Oh yeah, yeah, that's his nickname. Okay, and I started to talk about baseball, and we were talking about Wrigley Field, which is where the Chicago Cubs play. Yeah, and Wrigley Field is beautiful, and it's kind of one of those places where the modern meshes with the traditional and you can see all of history in it. And I started talking about that. I was saying things that you might say about the cottage. This little puppy behind us, yeah. And this little puppy, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the Burbastow stand. The, bur- the Burba stand, the Dimmy stand. Yeah, the and Dimmy then, stand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure he was responsible for as well. Yeah, exactly. But um, anyway, so we're talking about... Um, yeah baseball and Wrigley Field yeah. and he just suddenly starts this anecdote he's like yeah it's funny you should say that because um the only thing comparable place I can put it to is when I came to England I was staying in South London and I went to see a football team came to Craven Cottage no way the most beautiful place I've been that must my have been eyes, so bizarre for my you my eyes popped out of my skull like jumped off the seat yeah it was similar to the Charlie Cooper revelation that he was, yeah, he was yeah, at yeah. Like I had to jump out of my seat yeah but then he was like full of love about how Craven Cottage looks like history mm. wrapped in it. So what I was seeing in Wrigley Field, he was seeing in the cottage. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? That's crazy. Did, so did you fill him in on, on your association with Fulham? I told him that I supported Fulham, but yeah. it, it, almost, it almost got too weird that we had to move on. Like really? it was too strange. I, I couldn't really, I, I, I was trying to process, yeah, but he yeah. brought Fulham Football That's Club up insane. in the middle of Chicago. You didn't say get get your phone out. Get your phone out. Check out the top ten of the uh, the American American soccer. Not in America, we weren't top ten, were we? I think we might have grazed the top ten of the, of the of the football of the football chart in America. That's a very humble segue into telling everyone that we're in the top ten of. Well, what I didn't, are we? we didn't like to talk about it. I, top ten of a few charts, <laughs> I think. But uh, we're in the sports charts, yeah, we, which is really exciting and really lovely to sort of. So does that mean? Know, are we assuming that's entirely Fulham fans? I mean, you know, I know I, some Fulham fans that aren't, you know, that's right. I know some non-Fulham fans that are listening to it. Oh, really? Yeah. But like, that, but, wouldn't, but just friends of mine. Oh, really. right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but so, like, but that's... So Fulham but like, fans and your mates, that's what we're saying. Oh, no, I've got some mates I that I've made it. listen to it, uh, <laughs> you know, and so there is that, you know, yeah. a great name on the pod today. I'm super excited by this guy. Yeah. It's just, I mean, when you think of modern Fulham history, mm-hmm. like... You know, a generation of Fulham fans that grew up and 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 what we remember of, of recent times. Mm-hmm. This guy is is at the forefront of it. Synonymous, yeah, with it. without a doubt. And and to have him here with yeah. us at the cottage, yeah, talking about some of these moments. I think you know, again, it was one of those moments where I certainly feel, God, I'm so lucky to do this job. Totally. I mean, we are both quite easily moved when it comes to Fulham related stuff, yeah. but it was genuinely moving to be looking at the cottage and seeing Sultan Gira yeah. say it. And what I found is that as opposed to Berbatov, what we spoke about where we weren't sure what it was going to be like a bit, bit nervous, a bit tentative before we walked in. Sultan Gira had that essence at Fulham of, of being your friend. Mm. So he, he had like, sort of, I don't know if we projected it or not, but it's just this sort of kind person that was, all, do you know, was, was he, sort he, of humble. Definitely. Um, really balanced, level, lovely person. So I didn't feel any of that feeling before meeting him. I just felt like, oh, I'm going to meet an old friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, he was, he was exactly how you'd expect him to sound yeah. and be. Yeah. And I think summed up beautifully by the fact that when he arrived here, he was just so worried that he had like upset us because he was late, a I little know, bit late. I know. And like, had he got the bus? He got the bus, did he? He got the bus. Like rushed yeah. on the bus to try and get here. He was late on the bus. And it's like, dude, don't worry, man. It's all good. And it was that, that, I don't know. It's, 
It's, it's not really what you'd expect from a, a footballer of his stature. No, absolutely not. And it was like laced with little revelations through our chat. And one of them was, I'm glad I said it right at the end, but I that he looked like a footballer cut out from the 1950s <laughs> in the modern times when you watch him play. Definitely, yeah. And I wasn't sure whether it was because he used to roll his sleeves up and like hold them or there was something about it. But but he says, I hope it's been given away too much, he used to wear black boots and not the coloured... yeah like fluorescent pink and green type things. Yeah. And so it kind of, it, it kind of put him in your imagination. Yeah. Like a sort of ghost of the past playing football in the present day, but like mixing it with these units and still like making it work for himself. So you kind of had that thing. And cause he was quite slight. Yes. As a fan, you sort of, it, it made you project, oh, maybe I can be Sultan Gira. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, without a doubt, man. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's a really... Beautiful way of putting it. I, I thought you were going to say he was so slight that any kit on him would be quite baggy. Oh, it was. And as back well. in the fifties, forties, they were always like the shorts down to your ankles. Well, maybe you know there was a mean? bit. Maybe there was a bit of that as well. Yeah, yeah. But he always seemed like you know, like Bobby and that lot were, were quite big physical specimens, weren't they? But Zoltan yeah, yeah. always felt like he was slight compared to everyone, which he talks about actually in his teenage years how he yeah. was much too slight. And we go into the fact that when he was a kid. It was on, he, I mean, he, he lived on the street for yeah, a second. Yeah, it, honestly, it's really fascinating. And um, I mean, I think we'll probably just throw to it now. I think, honestly, it's, it's he's a beautiful man. Uh, it's a lovely interview. And I think Fulham fans are, are going to absolutely love it. Sultan Gira. Sultan Gira, welcome to Fulham Fix. Thank you very much. Do you know what? I'm really struggling looking at you and looking at across the cottage. I'm struggling not to shout at you, gear up, gear up. That's what I'm hearing it in my head as I look at you and all the goals you scored. Because we were just talking about then that the Hamburg goal was 13 years ago, almost to the day that you yes. scored. Yeah. Can you still remember that? Of course, you never forget these kind of moments in your life because uh, I was so special, you know, that year, that goal. You know, being the Europa League final, yeah. that goal, I was a little bit quiet on that game, but in the end, <sighs> I was awake, so I was in the <laughs> right time, you know, and uh, yeah, it's unbelievable feeling <sighs> still. I've got the tingles even thinking about, it. I can see it as you say it, the ball breaking to you, because it just yeah. sort of comes free, yeah, doesn't you it? Know, you know what, what I've done, uh, I always need to attack the near post. Right. And uh, attack the near post, I saw the ball is going over me so i just thought maybe i have to run backwards <sighs> because normally the players are losing their players you know yeah. before the first touch and uh, yeah i was lucky to be there and uh, even maybe i could pass back to uh, eric the ball oh yeah never but i just turned with the ball and uh, yeah it was great feeling of course we yeah, i think we were saying that we at that point you wouldn't have wanted it to fall to anyone else yeah you were in that sort of form and and especially during that run you were such an important part and involved in so many goals whether scoring or you know or you know having that telepathic link up with zamora that i think it was you know if you pick one player on the picture like that needs to fall to him i, I remember you. thinking it happening in slow motion it feeling like it happened really slowly mm. when the ball came to you like when you know what's going to happen. It was in my mind, was the same. Really? Slow, Slow motion. motion, of course. Yeah, when yeah. you're in this kind of position and uh, situation, I think the time is slowing down. And, yeah. Uh, maybe you feel bit, you have more uh, time for making decisions. So oh. that was also special. Yeah, as you said, I had a very good connection with Bobby Zamora mm -hmm. that season. Uh, I was lucky enough because uh, I could play with Bobby, Clint Dempsey, you know, Damien Duff and others. So Danny Murphy, we had a great team. Such and, a great team. Uh, we enjoyed the fo our football. You know, <laughs> we had, we had uh, such a good atmosphere in the team. We enjoyed the European nights. And uh, when we started, we, we didn't think anything about how far we want to go. Yeah. We just enjoy the moment, uh, you know, winning games, go through the group stages. Uh, we beat uh, knockout Shakhtar Donyas. I think that was the best team in that, that season mm. we played against. Uh, after the first game, I remember we're sitting in the dressing room and uh, the other players saying, hey, what about this team? <laughs> we had only 30% uh, percent of posi position yeah. in that game and uh, we couldn't imagine how we beat them. We home. won 2-1 Yeah, 2-1 But the second uh, game uh, away 
it was easier a little bit. We had more position, but uh, yeah, it was a great side, great team. <laughs> you know, with William. Yeah, yeah, yeah William was better. Fernandinho. Doug, Douglas Costa. Oh, so ridiculous so name. Did anybody hear that? Yeah, now? that was really, really good. Was that the team. point? Was there was there a point after knocking them out that you thought, okay, yeah, yeah, we could. No, I think after this. Juventus. Was it? I think Juventus. That was the point when we we thought maybe we can go uh, all the way because. Yeah. Uh, what are your memories of the Juventus night? Sorry, because it's it's something that's so ingrained in every Fulham fan. It's just be really interesting to know from your point of view, how did that feel, those moments? It's quite and, funny. And did Dempsey mean it as well? Yeah. Was he crossing or was that? A, yeah. It's quite funny because I nearly forget the first game. Yeah. Uh, we lost 3-1, but uh, yeah. I don't have too much, uh, you know, uh, think about that game, what yeah. we done, how we how we managed that game. But of course, the f the the... Home leg, it uh, was amazing. After five minutes, we was one nil down, yeah. and uh, you know the whole stadium just started to sing, stand, stand up, up if you still, still believe. believe. And uh, you know, we played, <laughs> we we played, <laughs> we played with like no pressure. You know, the, the pressure was finished yeah. after one nil. The okay, four one to Juventus. Okay, come on, let's try. And uh, we started to playing. Some nice football, creating chances. Yeah, Bobby scored the first one, and I think I can't remember when was the sent off before the second I goal. I think it was one 0 wasn't it, or was it one nil? Jeff Maybe one zero. I think yeah. because yeah, no, he's, he's I think a uh, fountain of knowledge over there. No, no, yeah, the first Cannavaro. first goal when uh, Bobby scored the first goal, he just pushed Cannavaro away. Yeah, yeah, he was on the floor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the second, I think, it was sent off. And from that point, we thought, okay, come on, guys, yeah. we, can, we can do this. And we scored the second, uh, scored the third. Uh, <laughs> I, I took the penalty. Normally, I never, I never, never took penalty oh, yeah. before that. Dempsey uh, Clint was was on the bench. Yeah. Uh, Danny Murphy was suspended. Yeah. And uh, I looked around. Okay, I will take it. So, <sighs> the pressure you must have felt. Did you feel the pressure? No. It's if you feel. Pressure when you take penalties, you you will miss. I think yeah. you have to be cool. You have to, you know, don't think too much about what's happening if you miss it. So it was was a good thing. And the th uh, fourth goal, Clint, Clint oh, no. was still still. Well, to mind. answer Ivan's question, did he mean that? Yeah. Did that, do you think he yeah. meant yeah. that? Definitely. Yes, definitely. He tried. It. It's impossible to make that you know moment uh, and uh, touches with with the crosses. Uh, yeah, I right. was sure he's, he's he was special player, Clint. <sighs> also, fantastic character, strong character. He was a winner. He was a killer on the pitch. Mm. So yeah, it was great. Uh, it's really interesting what you just said. Then um, that we were so far behind it, it relieved attention. And I've never thought about that before. But is there an element of that that, he, that we were so far behind the game? It was Juventus that there was a sudden freedom that wouldn't necessarily have happened if it was close there would have been a different sort of tension, wouldn't there? And then yeah. once it gathered momentum, it was just like everybody felt like there was no other outcome. Yeah, definitely. When you play against Juventus, it's one of the biggest teams in, in Europe. And uh, when you one nil down, the aggregate is 4-1 already. So what can you do? You just uh, try to win first, try to enjoy the moment. Maybe that's the finish of the, the Europa League. But uh, as we started to play well, score the first goal, second, you know, it was all of a sudden everything was changed. And the, we didn't th uh, thought about, okay, we could win, but we just feel it on the pitch. And in the dressing room in the halftime, we thought, okay, guys, we have to, we have to go through. We can, we can beat them because, you know, normally the Italian team's not always focusing. If they score one goal after they try to close Lock it down, down yeah. okay, just, okay. Uh, we have to think about uh, maybe the weekend, but uh, not here. Oh, no, you know what? That, that next day, it was in all the papers, and I cut out of um, a broadsheet. There was a big pitch of you over the cartwheeling, and flip. it had Fulham yeah. for Juventus one. Yeah. I can't remember. I would have been like in twenty, but I cut out this thing out of a newspaper and stuck it on my wall next to loads of bands photos. It was in every single paper. Did you keep? Have you kept anything like that? Do you keep? No, I didn't see any. Uh, newspapers. Oh, really? I just saw in the in the in, on the internet. 
uh, and my friends, of course. In Hungary, you know, uh, it was a un unbelievable year because everybody followed Fulham. You know, we yeah. played in Europe. Well, everyone uh, in Hungary were like, yes. you, you were representing yeah, yeah, Hungary. Because, yeah, because yeah, I start to shout after the game, I think, in Hungarian, into the camera. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know what. I don't know what you were shouting But, but uh, yeah, it was funny, it was quite funny. I can't remember. And also my, my two uh, best friends was here in that yeah. game. And after the game, I remember with the guys, uh, we went to the restaurant eating some nice food, enjoy the moment. <sighs> and uh, yeah, that was unbelievable. The Europa League final was one of the most amazing, but like sort of heartbreaking moments in all our lives. <laughs> There's a little moment when your ball gets threaded through to you by Murphy and you, you've got the ball. Can you still recollect that moment? Uh, the ball from Danny was, I felt it was a little bit long. Uh, I took a touch, but you know, if that ball is perfect or I taking a good touch, better touch yeah. than a goal or maybe a red card because it was a classic moment. You oh, know, yeah. the, goal is, the goal is coming out from the goal. You, you know, you passed him. And uh, yeah, I many times I think about that moment, oh, unfortunately. Don't. And the last one, I was oh. ready to take the penalties. You know, it was oh, only yeah, two minutes left. Don't, don't break my heart, I had honestly. I had cramp everywhere. Yeah. Calves, groin, hamstring, couldn't move. everywhere. Couldn't move. But I thought, okay, I will take the penalty. I will go for this side. But you had it ready. Yeah. You had it in the that ball crossing that line. That's yeah. heartbreaking, isn't it? To it hear it, that. I have to say, Danny Murphy is going to be a guest on this show at some point, and we will put it to him. Was the ball slightly too oh, heavy? Yeah. To you ask, is it, is it we'll, your fault? We'll see what he has so, to say so about that. Definitely, you for definitely the will say that was my fault. <laughs> yeah, <wasn't it? laughs> exactly. Definitely. And this is football. Do you know what was like it occurs to me when I think about all of your goals and how great you were at that time? But I, I read that when you were young, you played with like a heavy football that was about sort of close touch. And when I think about all of your goals, it's all with Bobby there, just tight touch, spin off type thing. Was that was that influence? Did that separate you as a footballer? Do you think? Uh, definitely. You know, you played uh, with heavy heavy balls. Yeah, when when the was the pitch was wet and was rainy. We had uh, not the best quality balls when we was young. You know, when we kick it, it was difficult to you know even <laughs> pass the ball. Not kicking like so. Uh, yeah, but the connection with Bobby, it's just like came. We just started to you know understand each other. Didn't uh, done too much uh, practice before because I always use on the side. I played left or mm, right. Yeah, and. Uh, I remember AJ uh, got injured. Yeah. Maybe Eric Nevland was also injured and was not many options <laughs> oh, to yes. play with Bobby. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the Fulham scout, he saw me in the national team playing as a number 10. Yeah. And the scout said, I think Zoltan can play there in that position. Yeah. That was my favorite position before, yeah. but uh, I was not ready to play that. Maybe I was not, uh, you know, physically that good sure but when i started to play with bobby it was easy it's so so easy to play with bobby because he's strong he's his movement is very intelligent yeah. touches strong ball you know hold up the ball mm. i was just around him and uh, <sighs> it just started to be a, a good connection so well as you said that i've just seen in my head as well the wolfsburg or away at wolfsburg where i don't think yeah. you're looking you, you don't look at bobby do you it spins the ball yeah, to him you know and then on the your biggest view, you just saw Bobby were moving away from the from the ball. Yeah. So and he know me. He knows me. I I try to do these little chops. You know. <laughs> and, uh, how, how, much, how much of that is is natural, or is how much of it is worked out in the training That's ground? You trying to get that connection with him? Yeah, we we done practice, of course. But uh, when you know each other, when you know he's moving away f from the ball, and Bobby's no. I if I just try to kick the ball, uh, you know, on the uh, target on the on the on the shot, and uh, he was ready. Maybe I will pass to, the ball to him. So we practicing on mm -hmm. the session, of course, without uh, practicing. But on some moments you cannot practice. Just feel it. You oh. you just be there, and uh, yeah, I think that was the best partnership for me. I played with yeah. with somebody with Bobby. Uh, was great too. 
it's Play an amazing thing to have a, that connection with a person without speaking, isn't it? It's such a strange. Do you do you stay in touch with Bobby? Do you have? Yeah, a, we just uh, text him to oh, each really? other. We're still missing each other, of course. Oh, that, is that what you say? Miss you. When you miss play, you, you know, yeah. when you play, uh, because I always try to, because I'm a coach now, the under 21 national team, and I always try to, you know, try to make them that connection. You have to be good connection with your teammates because yeah. if you have a good connection, it's, it's so much easier. So, uh, yeah, Bobby, I think after that season, he played in the national team. Yeah, that's right. You, and, you know goal. what? He, he played against me. Oh, against really? Against Hungary oh, in the <laughs> Wembley. Yes. That was the first game for Bobby. Oh, wow. Uh, we swapped a shirt. So no way, yeah, really. Yeah. Where's yeah, where's the shirt? Where's Bobby's shirt? Still in my in my room. I have yeah. a I have a room with the shirt. The England's and, more shirt. Yes, oh, yes, amazing. He, he write he write it on the shirt uh, for my partner. He's the biggest. That was his first cap, was it? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you've got that. yeah. So that's a pretty that's incredible really shirt. Yeah. That yeah. To yeah. Have. it is. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. But you know, I I can speak about others. You know. Uh, Clint Dempsey, mm -hmm. Damien Duff, uh, Jonathan Green, Diamancy Kammer in the first, Greening, first yeah. part. Mm. Dixon Atuhu. Dixon yeah. Johnny Pencil. Johnny Pencil, what Brother a team. Hengel, and it was, yeah. it was great, Hughes. great, great team. And a person that you missed out there is Roy Hodgson, and it's striking to me that when he kept us up, you were the, almost the first player that he signed when he had sort of agency. And then when he went to West Brom a couple of years later, he did the same thing again. So was there, did you two have some sort of connection affinity yes we had a good connection as you saw uh over the years and uh i remember when i i was just i had a, a thought not thought uh, somebody my agent said to me fulham maybe wants to sign you uh, just before the season finished and uh that was a great escape for, for mm. fulham yeah that season and uh, and on my you know eyes i watched the the results always i supported for the club to staying up because i was sure i want to leave west brom i right. had some other offers i had better offers than fulham uh, on the fi financial uh, way but uh, because i felt R roy the the manager wants me and I didn't feel in other clubs, you know, he's, he wants, he wants me. Uh, and I just felt this is the best uh, possible move for me. And, uh, but, it, but it wasn't instant, was it? The, the, I think when you came to Fulham, it's so weird. Cause again, something we spoke about is, is you feel like you joined Fulham and instantly you were this hero for the club, but it, it wasn't your first season was actually, it was yeah. a tough one for you. It was and, very and difficult. I think that I, yeah. I read somewhere that you said, um, you're almost relieved that your first game you're on the bench and that you weren't starting because <laughs> you felt like you weren't ready. You weren't firing yeah. in all cylinders. No, no. Uh, when the season started, uh, it was totally different style of football what we played in, at West Brom. Uh, we played with freedom. We was a very attacking team. Yeah. And we was not that organized team like like Fulham. So I struggled uh, early of the season. Quite restricted. And no, be because... Uh, you know, I done my job, you know, I was always in my position. I played midfield that we won against Arsenal, the first game home. And I felt I didn't play it, uh, well, but the manager and the coaching staff said after the game, Zoltan was fantastic. You played really well. And I thought, yeah, I only maybe touched the ball f uh, four or five times uh, in a half. So I just started to you know losing the confidence i wasn't sure i'm doing the right things in the team uh, because that was such a different style of play and uh, i lost the confidence when i touched the ball the ball was bouncing away from me and but the manager stick with me uh, and uh, i thought the supporters they lost uh, the the confidence in me you know i was i was fat it's, it's it's not 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 the best moment yeah. in my life. So I started to be on the bench, and I nearly said to the manager, "Thank you," because I needed that break. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I after a few months, I think I thought, okay, that's that's the way how we need to play here. And 
yeah, the second season was much, much better. And I realized what, what I have to do uh, for the team. Even in that difficult year, I remember you scoring an overhead kick against Man United. Yes. Was that, and that was in the first season, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Remember, that's at Hammersmith fans. Yeah, I remember that goal because that goal for me was very important. You know, not lose the, the, the how can I say, I lost the confidence, but you know, in this kind of moments yeah. can help you a lot. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, maybe it's a little bit coming closer to what I can do on the pitch. So that season was uh, like in and out, but uh, yeah, was difficult and yeah. massive as well to do. It. I mean, you know, it's it's one thing to score an incredible goal. Um, you know, to get your confidence back, but to do it against United, you know, not to do it against, you know, you know, a Crystal Palace or a, a Bournemouth. You did it against Manchester United. That's got to be make it even more special, no? Yeah, I was lucky enough to play against Manchester United that time, and that touches or yeah. you know that movement came on that game. So uh, it's like, yeah, it was a great feeling, uh, but I was sure. And I knew I have to, I have to do much more, uh, especially in the second second season, because I thought I'm not done, done enough in the team. So how, when we started the second season, you know, we started to play in Europe. There was not many friendly games, and the other players I think that was on on a little bit longer holiday because of the yeah. maybe I don't know the World yeah, Cup, long, or, wasn't it? I, I don't know, which 2000. 10, I think, yeah. or 9, doesn't matter. Uh, I just started to play in the Europa League uh, qualifications yeah. and uh, I started to feel much better, I played better. And I think the, the turning point was when I started to play with Bobby as a yeah. number 10. I think that was the turning point. And, uh, Such a mad coincidence, isn't it? Because if AJ doesn't get injured and you don't play in that position, then none of yes. that stuff happens. Life's yes. just sort of crazy, isn't yeah. it? This set of circumstances. You need luck in the football. You need yeah, luck. Yeah. You need sometimes you just need a good decision. Maybe not because you made a good decision. Just sometimes it's accident. Yeah. You know. Talking about that Europa run, there was a faint story that we heard. I, I don't remember it actually, but Am Capone when you turned up and there's, they all have your, your like gravestones with yeah. players' names on it at the start <laughs> yeah. of a campaign. Did you have one of your name on it? I was quite funny. <laughs> I, I was scary to get off the plane and to Listen, be greeted by When that. I landed, it was three o'clock in the morning and right. it was a long walk out <laughs> to the bus. Yeah. And we walk straight to the bus and we saw with the guys Grim with the Reapers. black hood, you know, yeah. black, like with the, with what, how you scythe. call this? Yeah, yeah, you, scythe, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and standing by the side, ah. like 10 each side and saying nothing, just standing like this. Oh. And uh, <laughs> we just- That's absolutely horrible. We walking to the bus <laughs> and the player <laughs> said, hey, what, uh, what, is, what is this? Yeah. What's going on here? So we just, uh, you know, Again, of get onto the bus, and we just looked out, and there was didn't steer, just we didn't move. And uh, as long as we just left with the with the bus, they just standing there <gasps> no. watching. Uh, was so funny. I, I heard that they had they had gravestones of each of the players. Yeah, names yeah it was. The... Yeah, but I think that was on the match day when we arrived. Oh, was oh, it? Oh, yeah, I probably think probably the same group yeah. of fans. Yeah. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some dedicated. That they? was wow. And we won that what game. We lost. We lost, we lost one year, I think. Well, not surprised, we beat actually. them uh, three one here. We lost. That, that was You're artificial. Head, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, we, we didn't scare. We just it was a good fun. Did I you think. have a sense of humor about it? Did, they, did you find it funny? Did the players find it yes, funny, or was yes. it actually intimidating? No, like, yeah. I think uh, they done nothing. You just, just, just you know. Stood if you think there. if you think of it, it's probably like you know costumes their mums made them yeah <laughs> it makes you feel a lot better about <laughs> yeah, it, exactly it? they've been up sewing sewing exactly. the hoods together getting it all together so it, was, uh, it was quite funny and there's other stories like you on on that trip you broke this or you you broke down or something and played football on the autobahn or something during that europa league the, music right? the volcanic oh, that, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah you had to right. drive yeah. to when hamburg, we went to you? hamburg yeah uh we we i think we went by two buses yeah oh yeah you two fly. buses yeah uh, away it was a long journey, and uh, I think the home game they could fly, you know, okay. for Hamburg. So that yeah. was 
advantage for them. Right. And remember that game was nearly in the first leg, uh, second leg after I don't know ten minutes yeah. or fifteen minutes. That was was unbelievable. Free kick, the guy. Croatian guy was Petric. Petric I yeah. think that was mm. we was in the wall, you know. Uh, and as 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 you know, the guy just uh, shoot the the ball, and Bobby he just turned. Okay, it's away, away. The ball is away. It's it's going away. Yeah, turn it back. And the goal is in the net. Yeah, what a goal that was. Bobby yeah. said just just during the game. That was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> it was, how, it it was, was so good. How we had can to sign you? It, didn't we? How yeah, can yeah. you say that? You know. Yeah. Oh, it's over. <laughs> wow. What a goal! You said. Yeah, wow. Uh, wow. That's so. Wild. Yeah, that was also a difficult <laughs> situation. But did you did you stop on the way to Hamburg via the coach to have a kick about on the autobahn, or is, is that, that is that? No, I can't remember. Oh, you can't remember I that. Can't yeah, remember yeah, that. Keep it up, Spanner. Oh. Other stories you've heard is that actually, and I wouldn't have had you down as this, but you were joke like someone at the club said that you used to use the phrase you muppet all yes. the time i called everybody the muppet <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> i don't know where it's come from <laughs> you know well, just yeah why every just, i don't know why <laughs> somebody maybe somebody called me once as a muppet and i started to call him <laughs> muppet just too. like the phrase yeah so, uh, <laughs> were you I, a practical joker in the in football teams yeah i tried yeah yeah <laughs> especially you know my accent uh, the english accent is is i think it's sometimes funny <laughs> when i started to to speak you know i was yeah. not shy <laughs> even if i'm not speaking so so good english uh, i can i can i try to speak and uh, i start i like i like the jokes you know around yeah. the place i like when it's not too serious you know when you are in the training ground or before the game you can sure. lose and when you start the work you can be concentrated who, so who was the best to uh prank as it were who did you like to uh who did you know could have a good laugh with out of the fulham team uh wait a sec oh was jimmy bullard was there oh, oh yeah, yeah, cool. he was, yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah. crazy yeah <laughs> definitely yeah. uh no just joking with everybody sure i don't know Simon Davis was also Simon Davis, he yeah. was quiet, but uh, I had a I have a great story with with uh, Digger. Yeah. We I always played on the left side, and uh, I wanted to play on the right, but Digger was on the right winger. So one game we played against Portsmouth away, and he said, "Hey Zoli, you can play on the right today." I said, "Okay, thank you." Oh, that's how it works. And uh, how the game started. He swapped. Yeah. Was Traore played and I don't know the other name. Doesn't matter. Two speedy Gonzalez. Right. They were so fast. Right. And they gone forward like crazy. Yeah. And after the game, I said, thank you, Diga. You know, I'll I know, you. I know why I'm playing on the right side. <laughs> oh, and he started, say, to, and he, just, so, he, yeah, he just started to laugh. <laughs> hey, uh, that was <laughs> unbelievable. So what did Roy not say? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why have you two? No, sometimes we so, swap yeah, yeah, because yeah. during the, because we, we both, uh, <laughs> you know, can play on uh, either sides. What did Roy um, make of your celebrations? Because it always struck me that Roy would be quite, organized mm. everyone has to be you know sort of respectful yeah. not that it's disrespectful. he doesn't strike me as someone that, that likes a like a, every time like you a do the cartwheel yeah. i can imagine roy saying to you afterwards what are you doing or did you ever have conversations about that about what your your celebration oh, celebration you Some, yeah. no never, never right he was all right with never. you doing that no i just well you never worried that you wouldn't land one of them and that you'd get, <laughs> get injured no 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 not really really no really how long do you practice that celebration for before you start pulling it out Good the bag? question i uh started on the playground okay you know i just uh be we played football oh when you were young yeah when i was young and uh, practicing uh from the fence you know uh jumping from from it and uh <laughs> We used the, uh, you know, sand pit. So I just started. Uh, the first goal I scored in the first, in the first team. That was the fifth division in back in Hungary, and uh, I scored. I didn't 
uh, practice it, I just started to do it. You know, the first I done it and stayed. So famous Always. in the cottage now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I got injured once. Oh, because, celebrating. Yeah, the, my teammates were so happy and he's jumping uh, next to me. And when I landed, I twisted my ankle. Oh! Did you have to come straight off? No, at that point? I, that's like, you I to, scared. Coach, I yeah, scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last this, thing you want to do is oh, yeah. <laughs> my ankle was big after the game, but I thought it's, if I'm saying to them, they're finished. They're killing me. You mentioned mm. um, learning in a playground. I hope you don't mind me mentioning, but there was a story when you went to West Brom about your upbringing and how, for a period of time, you just stopped playing football completely yeah. in your mid-teens and smoking and things like that. Yeah. Is that something you, you like reflect on still? Uh, yeah, I think because uh, my story is quite famous back in Hungary. Is it right? Okay. Because when I when I had the first big interview with me, I just said my story in in Hungary. In Hungary, so I was around eleven, twelve. I finished football. You know, I uh, started using different things, smoke, drink. Uh, I was on the street, like I was a street boy. So I finished football and uh, I started the football again when I was 16 mm -hmm. because I become a Christian at that time okay. when I was 16 and uh, completely changed my, my whole life. Was that someone saying, that sounds like a really weird thing, you know, you're in with this possible crowd, you're doing these things. Did someone come up and say, look, come to church, come do this. No, actually my father uh, brought me to the church okay. and uh, my father said, listen, I can, I cannot help you. I can't help anymore. You know, I, I don't my, what I have to, but I see you are on the, on the totally wrong way. So he offered me to, I, I bring you to the church and uh, I become a Christian. Uh, I gave my life to, to, to God. And uh, my life is was totally changed, and I started to be like a, a normal normal guy. And uh, I th I knew I had a, a talent for playing football, but mm. I was 16. I was skinny like like a stick. And the moment was yeah. You know, I was a very uh, skinny boy, 16 years old. Maybe that's it's too far. You know, it's too late to to play football again. But I thought maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. have a try and I start to be in the school again do the right things uh, start to play football on the street alone and then I went back to my old team and uh, everything just it's, it's an amazing story am I right in thinking from that point it was only three years before you were over playing in in in, 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 England. in England no I was 16 when I oh, so you uh, playing, yeah, so you I uh, started to play as a professional yeah. uh, two years time. Right. Okay. When I was when I nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, I was eighteen. Right. Wow, was but 18. even that to go from so short. Yeah. You know, you know my, I had I had, I had a problem with because when I went to the second division club, and then it was a big gap, big change. Uh, you know, physically. I wasn't ready, mm. so I needed time to get used Build to that up, yeah. uh, that football. Yeah. And uh, from that point, I went to Ferenc Varos, the first division okay. uh, back in 2000. That was a, again a big change, you yeah. know, big move. Uh, physically was not ready. And the biggest change when I came to England back in 2004, I came from Ferenc Varos to West Brom 2004. That was unbelievable changes. Mm. Yeah. Because when I watched the games uh, in the TV, the Premier League games, my friend said, hey, you have to play here. <laughs> no chance. Physically, I, I no, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, says it's, that, too, yeah. it's too much for me. But uh, when I came to the club, to England, I started to be in the training, even in the training session, I suffered a lot. So that was a big change. And the first season I played the whole games, but uh, my body was was not ready because I was weak, I was injured. So so I suffered. I suffered a lot because of this age. Yeah, you know that four four years that that's a much. Normally you have to you have to be, you know, get the basic physically, yeah, especially. Time. Uh, but I missed it. But you, overall, I'm 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 glad. I'm happy. 
you know, played 10 years in English football, the Premier League. Uh, for me, it's amazing. Do you mind me asking that when you, um, so you were sleeping on the street as a child? Yes, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And did, when you went to church, did, did, did was it like how you hear, was it an immediate epiphany? You know, when you walk into the church, did it happen in a day, in an evening? No, it was when I went to the church, I said, come on, leave me alone. I don't want to be in the church. Right. But, uh, you know, I become a Christian, like I, I born again. Yeah. I gave my life. I, I said to the prayer to, to God, to, you know, I give my life to you and yeah. change me. But was that in, sorry, I know just, but like, we, did you go to church, say a, a, a number of times over a period of a few months and then got to that stage or was it very much, you got to, you got to church that one day and straight away you just, like you said, there's an yeah. epiphany moment. Was it all in that one moment you decided, okay, this is, this no, is what the I need first, to do? The first, first time I just, uh, you know, being there, okay, I didn't understand too much about what they said. Uh, but the music was good, and <laughs> and after a few <laughs> times, reason. you know, I uh, after I I I made this pray, then I just started to, f you know, what what was the the moment? The moment was before when I when I was a bad guy. Sometimes I try to be changed, you know. F okay, finish <laughs> because if I'm doing yeah. this, I'm gonna be in a jail soon, or or maybe I will die, but. But when I changed, I started to hate this kind of things, what I done, you know, smoke, drink and others. And uh, I didn't feel any, uh, you know, I have to do this. I just started to hate. And that was the, the turning point because yeah. I, th how it's possible. I try sometimes to be, you know, a good guy, but um, next day I need to uh, drink or smoke or, or do the other things. Sure. So that was the the big turning point in my life, and uh, I I didn't had, I don't have any problem if I you know smell the smoke. I don't I don't want to smoking. Just I'm I'm free, like I, yeah, I could yeah, say. Free, yeah. So I was totally free, and uh, I change. I start uh, to be a Christian, and and that point, I said to myself and said I said to God, I give my life to you. If you use me. Please use me. I want sure. to be a football player, and I can I can say my story to the to the people because it's, it's never it's never it's never late. It's never late. It's an amazing story. Yeah, it really, you know what I got a sense of as well as I'm hearing you say that is you you begin to understand why the moments like Juventus is so emotional because mm. everybody's lives, even all of us at Fulham, been coming to Fulham for years, decades. Some people have never seen Fulham do that. Dedicated so much time to it. You have this one special evening where you have your own sacrifice and your own story. Yeah. When all those things come together, it's an extremely powerful yeah. moment, yeah. isn't it? But it stays with everybody. And that's why we all feel this connection to you and, you know, everybody that was there. Yeah. It's something that never leaves you. Yeah, of course. Uh, spe for me, it was so special because I spent only three seasons here. Yeah, that's but crazy. I spent, you know, I think the best moments in in the club's history you know we played in europe it was seven in the in the league yeah. so i'm blessed i think because i i was i was here because is the the results and the team was seventh and we played in europe not because of me i was i was there i done my bit but overall i was lucky enough to be here and played here yeah so i think it's it's a great you know it's it's so traditional and and special uh, place this yeah. one so i'm missing of course you can you know you're a football player you're missing those uh, nights and the yeah. days you know you're coming to the game watching the supporters yeah. you're coming by car uh, it was a nightmare when we came <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you know you never traffic. know when you're late yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. game but uh, that was my dream as yeah. i said my dream was I can come into the to watch the games after I'm finishing football, retiring, coming, watching and uh, walking, you know, the, the roads, dr stop drinking coffee, enjoy the games. But uh, I haven't got too much time to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just a quick question. So I know we have to finish quite soon, but um, do you identify yourself in young, now you're a coach, can you see yourself in younger footballers? Does that I often like that. happen? Yes, 
Yes, I can see them. I, I always telling to the players, listen, you are in the moment. I know where you are now at yeah. the moment. I know. And it uh, doesn't matter if you are a good boy or like uh, you have some some problems, some difficulties, because I'm com coming from, from that that place. Yeah. So uh, I think it's very important as a coach to understand the players mm -hmm. and to see the problem, see mm -hmm. the see the you know the life in their in the in the life what they uh you know how can i say experience mm. you know you have to see the players you have to uh close to them yeah. and uh, see how can you help with them but sometimes you cannot help them because you cannot motivate the players it has to come from inside because it's, yeah. it's difficult if you if you want to uh, motivate the players it's too it's too late yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you. you have to inspire them not not to motivate because if it's not coming from from inside from place yeah for example when you when you when you're a young, young uh, football player or doesn't matter even if you're playing in any any other leagues when you feel it's finished i, c I cannot run anymore but sure. all of a sudden you go through yeah and uh, you're suffering yeah. i think that's the passion yeah, you have yeah. to be uh, passionate about football because if you don't have passion you cannot it's go never, through yeah. all the way yeah i think i've um before you leave i mean i i know what your answer to this is going to be already but i like asking um the greats when they come who they would play up alongside especially the strikers so i've asked berbatov Mitrovic, if you were up front in an all-time Fulham team, and a lot of people would put you, it's crazy that you only played for three years because in our heads you yeah. played for Fulham for fifteen seasons, yeah. and most people, the first name on an all-time Fulham team would be Gira sitting behind the front man. Yeah, who would you be playing up front with? Uh, I think we need to take Zamora out of this as an option because oh, because it's, be Cause it's going to be Zamora, isn't it? You guys are quite know, like, like one mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's Bobby, Berbatov, Mitrovic, Sahar. Clint Dempsey. Yeah, go on, yeah, Clint. Um, what the names? Gordon Davies, Dirk Lehman, Steve Marley. Wow. Brian McBride. I'm trying to think as well. Paul Pesky Salido. I'd like to see you in Paul Pesky Salido up front. Wow. Barry Hales. Take your pick. <laughs> I think Berbatov was a special player. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you were Berbatov think, up front. I think he's, Can you imagine? he's, I think it's different. He's living in a different world. When he played, I, I saw him not just in Fulham, Manchester United, and mm, yeah, he's special player. I think he was, he was, he was that player. It's a different gravity. Absolutely great yeah. answer. It is a great Did answer. Did you ever tuck your shirt in? By the way, I'm thinking about your player <laughs> now. You, you always had your shirt, and it always felt like you were hold, hold, held your sleeves as well. Or yeah, I had made yeah, that yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, that time, we could use the long sleeve. Yeah, you used to hold it like hold it like this. Uh, are no, you running with I the think holding? Uh, maybe oh, I'm okay, using maybe. the extra large. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so that's why. Right. I have really long legs anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was that? It just felt good, like long... Because it, it made you seem like an old-fashioned winger. And yeah. uh, did you remember my boots? First... What were your boots? World Cup. Proper World Cup. Oh. Black boots. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. old... Leather. Proper, yeah, 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 the leather yeah. one. I always use the, the leather boots. Leather. Yes. Oh, that's so interesting. After Mizuno, oh. Mizuno white, they're always leather, oh. like the leather boots. Was that your whole whole football career? Same setup. You weren't ever tempted by. I tried some glow in the dark. Yeah, I tried. They were. I tried, but I said it's not. No, this is I it. don't need money, please. But I want to wear a proper boots. Black leather. It's so interesting you say that because when, when I picture you, you're like a sort of old-fashioned footballer yeah, so in the I modern was, time. I but was. that's kind of what, yeah, the black leather boots oh. with your heavy yeah. football. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, big old heavy like pink yeah, bladder yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, it's awesome, man. Thank on behalf, pleasure, man. All, thank you. on behalf of all Fulham fans, we think of you with so much love, man. So thank, thank you. you so much for everything you've done. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Zoltan Zamuppet Gira. Zamuppet. Did someone call him Zamuppet, or he used to like calling people? I think Zemuppet, yeah. I think he he, he heard a few people say it, and then that was it. He was like, "I'm having that." That's my thing. Do you know what? It was he was everything you'd want him to be, wasn't yeah. he? And then after we did that chat, we went and stood on the corner flag. Um, I did a photo with him mm. and I walked with Jeff back into uh, like towards the Fulham dressing room. And I don't know who it was. Jeff will tell me probably, but it was maybe a trainer or it was a doctor in a senior staff. He saw Zoltan from afar and it was like 
like some sort of mad old school reunion. He like ran towards him, grabbed his face, looked him direct in the eyes and just like held him really tight. Really? Yeah. I'm getting quite emotional thinking about that because it was so like, like him seeing Zoltan was like part of Fulham history. And the fact that he got the bus to Fulham is so Fulhamish. And then when he gets here, he's just this sort of like majestic uh, other name from another place. It's really, yeah, I love it. What were your favourite parts of the interview? Favourite? I, I, I really you? liked hear, hearing, obviously, the European tales, man. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, hearing about them rocking up to Anchor Perm and, yeah. and having them all lined up, Grim Reaper and yeah, that. Yeah. Just that and to know. be fair, it didn't number them because they lost 1 0. So. Well, it did. It got into their heads, clearly. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. we should adopt that next year, actually. <laughs> so everyone just lined up. Yeah, when, when the United players get off the bus, <laughs> <laughs> just get a load of fans. <laughs> I'm up for doing it. You get, you get, some, get some made up, get some costumes made up. Um, And that was nice. And I think. um. As well, the kind of, uh, you know, blaming Danny Murphy yes. for the final. It'll be interesting to see if we can get Danny Murphy on the show. We watch his I think we take can. on that. Um, yeah, see what he says about that. Maybe we have to yeah. cut, we have to play Danny Murphy in real time, what, what, what Zolly said. said. So to refresh your memory again, we're, we're talking about the Europa League final moment. I mean, I haven't even watched it back, so if I, it, it too hurts hard, me it. too much. Yeah, but sure. um, there's a ball where Danny tries to thread Zoltan through. And uh, in Sultan's words, the pass was a little heavy. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. <laughs> which is, is that the ultimate so the criticism history, to another footballer? Full of, full of history hinges yeah. on that pass being slightly too heavy in Sultan's words. So we mm. hear what Danny has to say about it. Yeah. Another time. Do you know another thing that I thought was really beautiful? Yeah, go on. I know I said it then, but the Hamburg goal at yes. the Hammersmith end just mentioned to him that it felt like when the ball gets released and comes loose, that time slows down for a second. And hearing him that say... That was really interesting. In his mind, it felt like that. Because when I see that in my head, it's like the whole ground goes... You know mm. what I mean? It goes in slow motion for a second. Yeah. So the fact that that was happening for him... In real... Yeah. That's because I, I often think you're going to ask a question like that and you're going to... The response you'll be met with is, no, of course not. I can't even remember it. It was just exactly. a quick thing done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just instinctual I do it. But the fact that he said, no, no, everything just slowed down. Yeah. yeah everything just felt... And I'm like, yeah, that's, um, you know, it's poetry. It's, him it's, it that's was. what it is. It's poetry. It, he makes me want to cry. I, don't, I, I you know, felt emotional talking about When's it. the last time? <laughs> he, he sums up this, this, this time in Fulham yeah. where, you know, I feel like <laughs> tears were warranted. No, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I when was the, when was the last time Fulham made you cry? Oh, so that's a great question. I think m- maybe the Europa League final was the time I actually authentically cried. Was it being there before kickoff? No, no, when that ended, I was, I did cry. Okay. Yeah, so yours were so sad tears. Like, yeah, sad tears. Right, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tears. I don't know if Fulham have made me cry another time. No, when, when's the no. last time Fulham made you cry? Fulham, oh, last time, uh, last time was probably last season, actually. Oh, really? Some of those moments. Yeah, I think, I Happy think. Happy tears. Oh, yeah. I think the final game of the season, you know, winning the league in such style. Yeah. Was pretty emotional for me. And oh, I think I got, nice. I got choked up. But the one I can remember, like, proper tears was Hamburg semi-final. <laughs> I only yeah. never thought we we're going to make it to the yeah, final. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. as much as you, look, as close as we got, I'm like, no, we're not going to make it. And again, ironically, gear is such a big part of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and that's when of I course. remember, and I'm, I'm, I'm there with my dad. We got a, a friend of ours along. Uh, my granddad, I think my granddad had just passed away a few months before it had been a season ticket. So there was oh, a lot so, of yeah, emotion. Was, There's a lot of emotion there, yeah. but I've never seen so many grown men cry. Honestly, well, that you, you touched on something there because I think part of that for them is you're thinking about the people that can't see it as well, aren't you? You know, yeah. So he becomes like such an emotional part of your life because he's facilitated that moment. So yeah, era. definitely. And he would have done that. And to make a more flippant point, Jeff mentions at the end there that his cat is named after Zoltan Gira yeah. Zolli. And I'm just wondering how many other Fulham fans have named That's pets, good. children, things after Zoltan Gira, and if they haven't. Can we start activating that? Well, no, Can I'm we gonna, have more Zoltans in yeah. the Fulham universe? You know what I mean? Do you know what? I think that, do you know what? There's going to be hundreds of Fulham fans out there listening or watching now that have definitely named a pet after a Fulham player. Mm-hmm. And if you can let us know, um, is it, should, we, should we create a hashtag right now? Fulham pets. Hashtag Fulham pets. And let us know, hashtag Fulham pets, what, what player you've named your pet after, what your pet is, that sort of thing. I've got a dog called Steve. Yeah, but can I also say, yeah, go on. <laughs> but I don't think any Fulham fan should have another option to call their pet anything other than Zolly. Okay. So how, 
<laughs> so uh, it's not just down. Zo- just just Zolly pets. Zoltan or Zolly. <laughs> so I've, Zolly I don't pets. think if you've got a full of pet. So yeah. sorry, your my my dog's called Steve. Steve after I, Steve Marley. Yeah, well, this is, <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna, well, so he's not after Steve Marley, but a lot of Fulham fans asked that when they were like, "Oh, well, you named up after Steve Marley." And yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent, of course. Yeah, How so could you not?" Was he a lot of money in a dog? Yeah, it was a lot of money. Didn't do he much. Doesn't, he doesn't do much. He's quite lazy. Does, yeah. Every like, now and then, like, he, you know, he pops up. Make <laughs> <for him. laughs> I've actually got. A, I've got a cat called Metroglu. Have you? No. Okay. Um, but. <laughs> Can what I just, was, on, it, what on, was his I first what, name? Mitro- Costas, Costas Mitroglou. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, weirdly, I, do you remember? Obviously, like we, we <laughs> this is Good. awesome. He joined us, uh, and then was like, uh, I don't think he played that season because he was injured straight away, and we didn't really see him play. But mm-hmm. then the next season, when we were we were down, he'd gone out on loan, came back the second season in the championship. I think he was I'm a right. lot of money, wasn't he, Mitroglou? He was, and he played some. F- Friendlies. I think right. he played a pre-season friendly. Yeah. It, uh, you know, this is pre, this is the second season down in the championship. And I seem to remember, I remember watching him and I couldn't believe he was on the bench and he came on and he was incredible. Oh, really? Yeah. He was so strong. And I remember thinking, if we hold on to this guy for this championship season, PM. he's going to be a brute. But he had no intentions, I don't think. And I think, yeah, yeah I can't remember who, who was it was. He was a little bit, wasn't he? Oh, without a doubt. And then he was, yeah. he was off somewhere else. But it, was, it, it did, weirdly, it gave me a moment of going, that's why we, we rolled the dice on him. Yeah, because he was, I mean, yeah, there must have been a reason somewhere. Has, any, has anyone called a pet after him though, though? That's more important. Metroglou. Okay. Metroglou's a good name for a... F- <laughs> if you want, if you got a pet... For a frog. And you, and you want it to be fun and related, it has to be named after Zoltan Zoligera, Steve Marley, or Costas Metroglou. Okay. Anyway, we've got a, um, another Fulham legend on next week. Yes, we do. Yeah, big absolutely. One, big yeah, one. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, do, it does it get bigger. As, as modern day Fulham players go, he is, yeah, I mean, he's he's the guy that you arguably say, yeah, that's the next statue. I surely. think there will be, there will be, yeah, there'll be statues and dogs and cats named after this guy. I mean, almost certainly, I'd say the majority of, of uh, yeah, pets are going to be named after this guy. I think yeah. that, that will be the responses. Are you going to, do you want to reveal, or should we do it after three? Okay, go on. One, two, three. Alexander, Alexander Mitrovic. Mitrovic. That was quite good, actually. Yeah, that was quite I thought you were going to say Mitro. I know, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that's why I thought I'd get the surname in, the first name in. Um, yeah, that's going to be brilliant. He's going to be amazing. And of course, final final game of the season as well. Uh, Manchester United. And obviously there's a story arc there. Given I mean. The last time we saw him. But I think we should get into that next week, shouldn't we? I think, we pro- I think we've waffled on enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's been an absolute pleasure as always, and uh, yeah, up the Fulham. Hashtag Fulham Pets, hashtag Finding Steed.